Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop along with StourMoldFires.com. We are back with yet another VI tool haul. Uh, we'll actually have quite a few videos I'll be hopefully able to uh, get recorded this afternoon. But uh, let's get started right into it. I brought this in primarily for two reasons. Number one, the sale on the Ultra Driver, which that's what's in this sweet box here, uh, was about to expire. And number two, they also introduced a uh, limited edition item, which we'll take a look at shortly. That said, we'll cover the basic stuff here, and by basic I mean things that could save you money, uh, particularly if you are interested in uh, Viha products. Now, they've got uh, basically four five-piece driver sets. They're all $24.99 and $25.99 respectively. The way this is going to be set up, you're slotted in Phillips. Uh, you can get it in standard soft cushion grip or, you know, the insulated version for a dollar more, which is actually a pretty good buy. I don't believe that they're the slim line. They would be sort of like what we brought in a while back uh, for our insulated haul. One of the first big deals we got. The other option, if for whatever reason you need square drive stuff and you want a really nice handle, I would look at it as you're getting your one and two square drives uh, for essentially 12 bucks a piece and then you're getting three others thrown in. So you get a one and two Phillips, three and a half slotted uh, with a standard setup here, three and a half, four and a half, six and a half. Uh, one and two Phillips again pick your handle style and then conversely if you need the square grips or uh, Squares you're gonna get one and two and one and two Phillips and the three and a half slotted now the other big deal That's going on is right here. This is an ESD safe uh, So that's gonna be big if you're working with electronics tons of bits. I believe that's gonna be the same bit ratchet that we got uh, in our impact go boxes, which is mainly the reason I'm not going after this and then right there you do get a nice little adjustment there. It's basically a, a magnetic bit holder uh, for the tiny bits. So if you're into electronics, $59.99, that is actually a really, really good deal. I can attest to the bit ratchet. It is a very, very nice piece. So we'll throw that aside. We did actually cross the $100 threshold. Uh, so we've got the VHA sticker pack. It's basically five bucks if you want it, uh, 91493. But you can see what is included right there. I've shown this multiple times in an effort to make the videos a little shorter for you. I'm not going to pull all of them out. Uh, they are super cool though, particularly if you're just a big fan of the brand or you like to throw stickers up on your toolbox. Uh, the back of your children, you know, random friends to advertise via whatever you do with them, they're free if you cross that threshold. Uh, but if you do, if you're just picking up, say, a standalone ultra driver for like 30 bucks and you want the stickers, five dollars, you can get it. 91493. And again, if you want to see those in detail, we've got uh, got them featured in several videos. First item right here is not the ultra driver, and it's going to be a duplicate. <laughs> so. Let's get that out of the way. And what is that you're asking yourself? Kind of looks familiar. I hope it does. If you didn't watch that video, I suggest that you do it. But this is part number 91403. This is their steel stand for 30 screwdrivers. We had it in a tool haul. I've done a standalone video on it. Uh, $37.98 is the price. By all means, uh, if you've been around the channel very long, you know that I could use it. Uh, we've got plenty of screwdrivers here, and the fact of the matter is, I actually like it so well that uh, I've always been the type that keeps my drivers in a box. I didn't used to have this many screwdrivers, number one, but number two, I just always kept them in the drawer. Nice and tidy, I know where they are. As you start to accrue more and you're attempting to test them, see how they hold up, which handle styles you like and which application, so on and so forth, and your collection begins to grow, uh, my conventional method of storing them, you know, just kind of sorted nicely in a toolbox is not necessarily ideal at that point in time. So what I've found since I've had this stand set up on the back of the bench it actually works really well. I'm able to see what I've got, decide what I want to use if I want to, you know, try a different brand or something for this application, see if it holds better, if I find any issues, if the handle ticks me off, whatever. It's just worked really well, so much so for a fact that I'm bringing it in again. Now, I always say this, if I bring something in again, it's because I like it. Uh, or it was on sale and I liked it. Something along those lines. The catch with this one, it is not available at KC Tool. Their precision stand is awesome. You can actually fit four and some six inch drivers. Uh, you start to get, you know, kind of dicey past four. It's really good up to that point. Obviously, it's only intended for precision screwdrivers, but it works really well with the four inch stuff. 
depending on how structured you can fit something taller but this will handle pretty much anything and again we've got the standalone video on it what I was debating and what I want your feedback on I wouldn't do anything too crazy to this sucker it's a very nice kind of like a hammer tone finish you know in the 90s we had the hammer tone paint this isn't like as aggressive uh, but it gives it a nice sort of a uh, powder coat finish if you will what I was thinking about doing though is spraying this thing and uh, it would mainly just to differentiate the two uh, add some variety it would kind of be a neat little side project because uh, you got to remember you don't have to keep things I mean the natural aluminum the KC tool stand comes in is great but if you were set up and you wanted to anodize it you could do some pretty crazy stuff and uh, sort of if you're set up if red is your color go to town what I would probably do this Jador rescue knife that's sort of like a metallic blue that's probably what I'd shoot on this sucker so in the comment section let me know if you think we should spray this one again we've got one that is mint condition right back at the side of the workbench over here and uh, we're not really hurting it in any way shape or form if the paint flakes off it flakes off in fact this goes against everything I know I might minimally prep this and shoot the paint over and then if it were to flake off I don't really care because I love this finish if I get into this finish we're gonna lose the powder coat and everything but uh, I don't know something something to think about so let me know your thoughts if you'd like to kind of see like a custom and I do mean lightly custom or just essentially color changing uh, the VIA screwdriver stand been trying to keep my oily fingerprints off of that thing in case I do paint it uh, next up right here this is a simple thing this is the impact torsion bit sets so these are the terminators you can tell by the red uh, casing there back there though did anyone notice that? Making good use of my VHA coasters. Didn't just buy them for the heck of it. Oh no, I use them. Yellow was kind of my least favorite, so I figured I'd see you know, how they hold up. But uh, so far, so good, and this thing's sweating quite a bit here. In the, uh, we basically are in summer now, uh, but it's only spring because we have a crud ton of severe weather. Should, should wake up to some supersized hail Monday morning, they're saying now. Nonetheless, T25, use it all the time. You know the bit. I get these crates in at work. And I take my impact there, I've got my VHA collar. Ultimately what happens is when Rambo sinks the screws in way past flush, where they should be, uh, the collar starts to run into it. When I say collar, I'm kind of meaning my bit holder. Sometimes the collar actually hits too, but it's usually a situation whoever drove that in uh, was using a collared bit too, if they were using a proper bit. So for $6.96 I was able to pick this up. It was what part number, in case you would like it. Uh, da, da, da. 76856, I believe. 696 direct from Viha. Again, nothing fancy, just your standard T25s, but kind of just consider them double length. Uh, all my other bits are in my impact bag, which is in the truck. <laughs> but uh, you get the idea if we were to swivel that little Phillips guy over, which is a Terminator bit, by the way. Roughly double length. And uh, I'm going to give those a go because, again, if they're flush mount, everything's fine and dandy. But when they sink those things in, what I've been having to do at work is just go get the fold-out keys and manually break it free. And, of course, the very first couple of turns are usually the tightest. So that's that's sucked, and I'm hoping to eliminate that. These might be a tool that helps me along the journey. Next up, let's get into the limited edition item. I apologize, it's taken me so long to get to this guy. That's not by choice that it took that long. It's just a situation where I've been extremely busy. If you're not following me on Instagram, please do so. I got those pictures up the day it came in, actually. I was super excited. Opened it up at work, not necessarily to see this, although that was incentive. We'll cover that in just a second. Part number is 91565, direct from VHA. This is $14.96. I think I might have got it for a little cheaper. The catch is, KC Tool has this, too. And I think you can get it from them for like twelve seventy two, a little bit less than you would pay direct from VHA. Obviously, I was bringing some stuff in already, so I figured, what the heck. Now, the catch is, and the reason it's important that you see this, these are limited to 500 items. Uh, when they came in, I wondered if they would have like a... Oh, they did! I, I did not know this. I was kind of... I was kind of bummed out when I ordered it uh, because I thought, you know, well, you know, hopefully they'll, you know, stamp it or have some sort of designation. That was completely covered. I've not taken this out of the bag, obviously, or I wouldn't be excited like a little schoolgirl. But uh, they did actually stamp these suckers, 80 out of 500. So now my question is, 
if you've picked this up what number did you get how soon did you order i think i placed mine really really soon after again primarily because the ultra driver sale was ending uh, and also casey tool the ultra driver i wanted it was out of stock uh, so that helped sway things I started to buy another one when I brought in some stuff from KC Tool, which we'll hopefully record that later this afternoon. I didn't because, you know, I didn't want to, like, be the guy that, like, buys 20 of them and hogs them or something. So I don't think, too, it would have been, put a huge dent in the uh, supply of these things. But my idea, I'd rather have everybody that wants one be able to get one as opposed to, you know, five or six of us buy two or three type of a thing. You know, that eats up 18, kind of screws 15 people out of it. On this, I don't know if like uh, they sent a select number to some uh, vendors or something like that. I'm not any idea on how it went. If the employees grabbed some, if they had first pick, you know, the president got number one. I don't know, but that is super cool that they actually did uh, stamp that thing. So, uh, the Rattlin' Rapala is a lipless crankbait and a must-have lure for all angers. Extremely versatile and can be reworked from top to bottom and performs at all rates of retrieve. Cast or troll, the R&R &R produces a rattling sound that will get the attention of all species of game fish. And again, I actually have a couple of these. Um, or my, I guess my grandfather had them I got them. I think I have one. It was kind of like this really cool... They have... If you're ever looking for neat paint schemes, like for a motorcycle or project car, don't discount fishing lures because they have some really crazy stuff. You can get into like chartreuses and things like that. Uh, but this is honestly just the classic design that you would know. They haven't really changed it much over the years. Hooks are still insanely sharp. Viha branding is only on one side, but again, let's be honest, this is kind of a collector's item. Uh, I don't know why anyone would use this unless you just want to. If I had two, I guess I would. More than likely what would happen to me at our lakes around here, I would cast it out and uh, we would probably lose it. The line would break and it would be on some little like dead wood uh, down at the lake bottom. But... Um, Classic red and white, you got the VHA logo, you got the script. Let me uh, try to get that in hand without killing myself. There you go. That's a pretty good look at the guy. Looks awesome, super cool. It's uh, I know it's probably looking like a weird white on the camera. Uh, as with most fishing learners, when you see them in a video or picture form versus in a store uh, or outside, they look radically different. This is sort of like a, a very heavy pearl. Again, that's why I was telling you, if you ever need color inspiration uh, and you don't have a wife or girlfriend that will drag you to like craft stores, go to like Academy or Bass Pro, whatever you've got in your area, and look at some of the lures because they've got some really cool, uh, unique color schemes going on. But there it is. This is number 80 of 500. What I want to know from you, uh, if you're going to pick this up, what number did you get? When did you order all that jazz? Uh, again, I had no idea that they actually did stamp those with the limited edition. So, very neat in my opinion. Once again, 91565, that is going to be the part number. You can pick it up from Viha or KC Tool. Uh, they are the only two retailers I'm aware of that actually have those. Uh, so, we've got our sticker pack. We've highlighted, shout out to the coaster there. We've taken a look at the screwdriver stand. Let me know again if you want to paint it. Uh, big deal flyer. Limited edition item. I think we're ready for the grand finale. Now, again, if you followed me on Instagram, you already know that this is not just an ultra driver. With the ultra driver, and I'll probably make a standalone video on this coming up, there's essentially three designations, Trademans, Tech, and Alt Industrial. Similarly, they do have sort of like the security bit one. That would be very, very few and far between. Obviously, if you need those, it's a huge deal. Uh, but for the average person, you're going to go tradesman, tech, or industrial. Um, the difference is in the bits that are included. So with this tradesman here, let's go ahead and uh, open it up before we run through that. Actually, well, it's not. This is part number 77786. So 77786, super lucky 86, whatever you need to do. I do want to mention again before we get into this, even the bottom side of the box. This is really cool. You can see the branding website there. It gives off the illusion of carbon fiber. Uh, I'm a fan of carbon fiber. I think that's awesome. That is really, really cool packaging. 
Uh, obviously, it's not super fancy on the inside or anything, but hey, this is a box that you would definitely not mind keeping. Uh, the neatest thing, though, they continued the carbon fiber theme into the flyer. You can see there, this is the Ultra Driver. It is the 26 in 1. You can get yours from Viha Tools or Amazon or, of course, KC Tool. Now, right here, this is a situation. The first thing I want to tell you from everyone that's talked to me about my little pop-up screwdriver the biggest question was always is it magnetic is that magnetic is it magnetic and the answer is yes this one i guess the catch with the ultra driver it is not magnetic it is also not compatible with standard bits and the reason for that you got to think about it we've got 26 bits and the way they're able to do that is basically they have a two in one uh, so there's 13 bits and uh, you can see here you can pick up the uh packs individually like if you lose you know your t25 you're going to need to order the 77754 uh, when you're getting 10 of them for about 10 bucks not a terrible deal particularly if it's something that you use frequently now the catch with the ultra driver this is ideal to throw in the car the motorcycle top drawer type of stuff you know the desk drawer at work uh, the kitchen uh, give to relatives you know if kids are going off to college home warming house warming <laughs> marriage gift whatever it's just a very, very useful, practical tool. And instead of having 26 drivers, which, hey, that's the route I would personally go, uh, this is a way for you to come in and actually take care of things in a different manner. The driver itself, there it is. This is Viha Soft Finish Cushion Grip. It's obviously not going to be as soft and comfort ergonomics, you know, factored in as their standard drivers. For the simple fact, this is a hollow core, uh, and you can see right there on the business end, 26 one is what that says. It's not a Dirk Nowitzki type thing. Uh, 21 one. Uh, this is 26 and one essentially is what that means. The business side right here, it's sort of got like a locking bit holder. It is a hex type design, but again, you're going to have special bits for this guy. So if I press down here, just like we do with our pop-up, this is a little different because you've got a big carousel if you will now this does turn uh, so whether you're the type that would turn the handle to find your bit or the type that would turn the actual spindle you're in business now the o-ring i think that's kind of been the big complaint you know when you start to lose these that's sort of all that holds those in um, people love this but that does seem to be a common complaint Interesting enough, on the official Viha Instagram account the other night, they had a deal they were asking people that. All this stuff happens when I'm at work, or I would ask these questions. But uh, someone said, hey, I love my Ultra Driver, uh, but, you know, it's constantly, you know, springing out. They were referring to the bit holders. Are you doing, planning to do anything about it? It might have been a deal where they had it in their car. I don't know exactly. I screenshotted it. Okay, so we'll take a look at it sometime. But uh, Viha said that they were possibly going to be working on an upgrade so that's interesting to note if you were in the market for this you brought one in and you loved it and you're like man i'm going to get all three of the other ones i don't care that i could buy the bits separately might hold off on that might just pick up the bit reload packs in the event that they do usher in the new model uh, which that would be a, uh, a critical addition you know but there it is and this was a special one though for the simple fact it was also packed with the buy cuts uh, if you follow me on instagram and you saw these i was this is actually why i went ahead and opened it at work i wanted to see the lure but i also wanted these because i had a stupid job i was having to do and uh one second here all right my apologies about the random interruption but i had to had to take that phone call the good news is i'm getting some jimmy johns out of the deal and this is the screenshot i was referencing here Someone asked, are we working on a stronger design for the 26 and one Mine breaks in winter easily. The inner bit holder, I believe they would be referencing that O-ring retainer. And they said, thanks a bunch for your input. We promise to work on that bit holder. Stay tuned with our social media channels. So I don't know if that was just a generic response, but it sounds like they're aware of the issue. I know that's not focused, don't worry. And they're actually working to improve it, which is pretty cool. And... Uh, also, that was my uh, sister calling me, and what she found uh, driving around town was a demon that they'd never seen before. So, there it is. 
I actually know the guy. Uh, I know pretty much all the Mopars in town, but uh, he does have new wheels on it that I hadn't seen. So, random interruption is over. My apologies, but these things are sweet. Now, there's a couple different versions. There's this size, and then there's the same size with an industrial handle. Spoiler alert, I've got that coming from Casey Tool. It should actually be in the mailbox, but I didn't feel like driving to town today. Plus, I had a ton of videos to do anyway. But, uh, these are their buy cuts. We'll probably do a standalone video on them. Essentially, the way this is going to work, when you have the power button up, you get 100% leverage. When you have it down, you can generate twice the force, if you will. Uh, they're kind of funky to get used to. What I use these for is, and this sounds really dumb until you're actually there and I told you to do the same job. At work, when we get motors in, uh, there's different factories, you know, that we get the motors from, and they're all different, but ultimately, the typical design, there's a cardboard box over the pallet with the motor, or motors, depending on the horsepower, and up top, there's a ton of staples, they shoot them through, and they're the typical Brad-type style, you can get them out pretty easy, even by hand if you wanted to, but I usually use pliers just to bend the tangs, get them out, it's kind of something fun to do. Main reason there, I actually reuse the cardboard. I cut it down. Uh, we use it for floor, floor covers in a paint booth. Uh, we set nasty stuff on it. Uh, we use it for shipping, all kinds of stuff. If a customer's got like a brand new truck they show up in or something, uh, we can throw it down, kind of protect the paint on the bed. You'd be surprised how many people uh, show up and like something really, really fancy they just got and they're like, oh, that's going to mess my paint up. <laughs> it's like, yes, it is. But uh, that's why you keep the cardboard around. And I don't like having the staples in it because then you go to grab the cardboard and you get, you know, stabbed. And it sucks. And after a period of time, you're like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to do it myself and pull the staples. So that is what I do. But then on the bottom, and this varies by plant, there are staples that they shoot to hold the box in on the bottom to the pallet. And they're not like the conventional ones that just have, like, you know, a tang that long. They've got, like... Some of them, I don't know, I'd say from the tip of my finger to about this first fold, they're ridiculously long. I mean, I would love to see the gun they're using those to shoot that far in through the wood. But ultimately what happens is you come in and you can't pull those by hand. And typical pliers, since it's a staple with a really narrow profile, especially kind of like worn out pliers or anything that's been used, you can't get a good grip because it's such a small surface and then as you're trying to pull it out it's got so much force it's coming what i had been doing was using some Klein side cutters and I don't cut I actually like to come in and just grab and what I found is that the cutting pliers even though this is not an intended usage I guess it would be sort of a stupid life hack type of a thing as long as you can control your leverage not enough to cut just to grab that holds way better now, if you've got brand new pliers or really good ones, you know, it might not be an issue. Over time, I swear, though, those staples will not hold. When I am basically grabbing into it with a cutter, it's much, much easier to articulate. If they're super flush, I can come in and kind of get them started. The other neat thing, and this is very hard to do with pliers, with this being a side cutter, I can come in up against the wood grab down on the edge of the staple, you know, kind of the 90 degree point, and then I can fulcrum it against the pallet, which you kind of have to do. I mean, these things are in there. And I'm able to work it loose in that manner that I come around to this side, and again, since this is kind of a flush profile, I had no issues with the power button, the Kleins didn't have one uh, for what it's worth, but then you're able to come in and move that back. Side cutters, not intended for this purpose, work really well. And again, I do that. The pallets, some of them we re the motor pallets are really weird uh, they're all custom made and they vary even per shipment you could get like two 25 horse motors in and one pallet's built one way and the other one is totally different uh, and it's not a deal where they're just salvaging stuff i mean these are pallets they build in-house so i haven't quite figured out what's going on i guess each employee has their own discretion or preferred method but uh, anyway i tear those out if we don't reuse the pallets, we used to give them away for bonfires every October. Uh, then the local college had to quit doing bonfires. Now we've got like a couple of uh, customers that will come by and they actually do like trade schools in their little farm towns. They'll have like a day where they teach kids how to build stuff. And uh, we'll give it to them and they granted still have to take them apart and pull the nails. But 
I have to load them, they help load. I don't like those giant staples sticking out, so that's kind of one of the reasons. Plus, if we ever do it, we don't want them there for our customers to contend with. Uh, it's just a, you know, kind of a practical type of a deal. There will be a better standalone video on this thing. We still have some on the Ultra Driver to cover, and I've sort of lost track of time with everything going on. But uh, if we come in, you can kind of see how far that kicks out for the extra leverage. It has a pretty good jaw opening. And I use these quite a bit at work. We're going to zoom in, see if we can uh, make things happen. With that being black, I don't know that you're going to be able to see, but there's a ton of red paint <laughs> in that cavity. Uh, it just kind of flakes off in the motors and stuff, but they look mint, and I use them a lot. Now, granted, I will admit, even though I've done this a ton, probably five or six you know I accidentally cut the staple but hey they cut really good too which is what they're actually intended for but the fit and finish on these I was very impressed with I had that one pair of the sort of like funky 45 bent nose ones and they sort of had some issues coming out they weren't consistent on the gaps these are a different animal man they are uh, really well done the grinding on them was done nicely easy to articulate again a lot of people complain about the power button once you get used to it it's not that bad right here you can kind of tell it's a taller profile it is up and you'll note sort of the handle kick out let me back this out for you it is about from the driver to that point if i come in and we articulate them again you heard it go down now we're kind of sitting at the funky angle right so that is them in a nutshell again i don't want to spend a ton of time but they feel really good in hand uh they're the first sort of set of like super strong i've cut chain before with things that weren't really intended to you and uh, i don't know why seems like everyone uses hacksaws for that but uh, there's a lot of good pliers that can do it and do it way easier anyway back to the bit driver this is kind of important and this is cool this is almost like a viha after dinner mint uh, we've got the coasters we've got the rattle and Impala. maybe we need to look into after dinner mints and i'm glad i opened on this and it's black and i didn't even realize this was a resealable bag i thought it was going to be a uh, fixed position one so this is what i'm talking about though when i said these are double ended this is exactly what i mean now the issue with that it's going to be fine for our ultra driver but if you were going to go put these in like your 6-in-1 Klein or just your Viha bit holder, not going to work because it's a radically different design. And there it is. Now again, the biggest complaints I've heard from people is that they wish this was magnetic and that that, uh, they have issues with this braking. And again, it sounds like Viha is aware of that and working on it. So if you wanted the collection, if you love these, if you keep the tradesman in your truck and then you've got kind of like your project car and you wanted to have the tech one in it and mix and match your own bits maybe wait a little while i don't know how soon they're planning to usher in a new model but it sounds like they are working on it and if they improve this and you've had issues with it as that customer did might kind of sit back and wait and see what they come up with but uh anyway i'll get this thing populated and we'll wrap this up again sorry about the uh, randomness and the interruptions but we'll have a more detailed on this one and more detail on these uh, buy cuts as well so uh, stay tuned for that we'll be right back have this thing populated ready to rock all right so i realized as i put my second bit in before we populate the actual driver we might want to talk about what's included this is the tradesman now keep in mind it was only packaged differently because we popped for the one with the buy cutters but slotted family we got a three four and a half five and a half six and a half in the phillips camp right below that we got a zero three a one and a two Lone Wolf there below it is a Posi Drive 1 and 2. Square Drive is up next. We've got 0, 3, and a 1, 2. SAE Hex, we have 8th and 9 64ths. And then we've got 5 30 seconds and 3 16. Up here, we have got a T10 and 15, and a T20 and a T25. And then hiding out down below because I was trying to have this focus good, we have a 3 4 and a 5 6 metric hex. Having to hold the camera manually and, you know, you know about the focusing issues, so I think we did okay there. Alright, you ready for the grand reveal? There we go. This is my carousel. This is how I chose to orient them. Couple of things, and again, I'm a big fan of Viha. This is sort of on the, this is pretty cool, but it could definitely be better. So we know the complaints about the O-ring. We know people would prefer it was magnetic. But I offer you this. I've tucked these suckers in here, and I kind of have my own setup. So up top, we've got slotted 
Phillips and then the Torx because I honestly think I'd be more likely to use those. Uh, the Hex stuff I might actually use more frequently here around the shop, but I've got really nice dedicated keys, so that's probably the route I would go, hence why they're on the bottom level there. I've also put the uh, metric stuff down there and the square drive, which again, squares are easy to identify. Uh, the metric hex and the SAE hex, good luck knowing which one is which, right, just by eyeballing it here. There is no designation. Now, obviously, many of us, you know, you'll know the bitch, and you'll be like, that's my T10 and 15, that's my T20 and 25. For average people, it's like, okay, I need a T25, and, you know, they're going to come in and, well, what's that? They're going to pull it out and not know. I realize the freedom here, the beauty of what they've done here, if you want to populate it like I did, that's great. If you're using this same ultra driver and you're going to use the hex and the squares and the posi stuff, you're going to have it up top and you're going to have the Phillips stuff that's slotted down on the bottom. Whatever you want to do, you can custom tailor it. If you love what I did, you can replicate it. Uh, if you hate what I did, you can do the exact opposite. That is the freedom in not having this stuff marked. Now, if each one of these was labeled, you know, if you had, you know, Phillips 1 and 2, for example, you can go to town. However, if you would prefer it to be on the bottom, that's going to raise some issues. The other thing is, the way to mitigate that would be if you had some designation on the bit where maybe this was translucent, which wouldn't look near as cool in my opinion, uh, but it would add to the functionality of it. That's sort of a a small issue uh, obviously you know if you use this stuff frequently you're going to figure it out and you sort it yourself but that is a knock just in the general aspect now the other thing you heard me say 12 bits here and you're like well that's a 26 and 1 12 x 2 is 24 where's 25 and 26 well they've got to be up here at the front <laughs> and this creates some concerns because when you have this shut you know right you've got a nice rounded edge nothing that's going to tear fabric uh, tear a hole in a kid's backpack, you know, a tool roll, anything along those lines. And it takes up less space without the bit. Now, what I did, I had the posi, or uh, I should say uh, posi 1 and 2 here, right? That is correct. Already knowing the bits pretty well. I will very rarely use that. However, if I did throw this, you know, in an all-purpose type of deal, I would probably want it in there. But around the shop, I'm not going to have much need for that guy. So my my thing is going to be to eliminate him completely <laughs> and I guess I'll throw him back in the bag here that way this can sit flush I can throw it in the stand it's not going to be an issue and we can just go to town in that manner but that is a concern now obviously what many of you will do is buy multiple bits multiple bit sets maybe even as we mentioned multiple ultra drivers Package up your own bits. If you could care less about, you know, the SAE stuff that is of importance to me, you can throw a ton more metric hex keys in there. If you're interested in Torx, you can go that route. Whatever you need to do, you can kind of make happen. Again, there are a few limitations there. But uh, for what it is and for what it's intended for, you know, this isn't necessarily designed to be thrown in an industrial setting, you know, or like a hobbyist workshop and replace dedicated drivers. This is sort of... This is in my glove box, and now I don't have to have, you know, a bundle of 15 screwdrivers that takes up this much space. That's where this shines. That's where all of this type of driver shines. And again, the versatility here is really, really nice. Shortcomings, biggest ones initially, you're not going to have an issue with the O-ring and the braking, uh, unless you're, you know, kind of rough. Over time, I guess it's going to happen. But... I think being able to see what you've got would be a definite pick-me-up, maybe have that be magnetic. Uh, there are ways to work around that. You can magnetize the bits, I suppose, but uh, those are common complaints, and that's my thoughts after seeing this for the first time. So, in summary, uh, we picked up our Terminator, uh, extra long bits. We've got our Ultra Driver. We have got the bicuts here, which are really, really nice. And uh, we got a brand new screwdriver stand. Let me know if you want me to paint it. We got the Rattlin' Rapala, which is pretty sweet. And that's about it. The sticker pack, of course. Rest assured, we're going to have the industrial ones of these because, again, I like these so much. I went ahead and purchased those so we can kind of do the handle comparison. Uh, we'll go into more depths on those in that video. Same thing with this. I've got some plans for it, so you'll be seeing it again very shortly. But let me know, if you've got the Ultra Driver, which one did you get and why? If you didn't know, the Technician, Industrial, and Tradesman all have different bit sets, so you can kind of vary it based on what you need. And you can sort of custom tailor with standalone bits. Again, we'll do a very in-depth video on that coming up shortly. 
But which one did you pick initially and why? And then similarly, if you've had this for a long time, A, what are you doing with it? Is it your daily use, everyday carry type of a driver? Is it something you've thrown in the glove box and used two or three times? Is it sort of in your mobile toolbox? Did you gift it? Uh, which they would make fantastic gifts in my opinion. Let me know that. But if you are using this frequently, have you had any issues? If so, what are they? Because again, I'm a guy that got this for the first time. I'm offering initial impressions. I can't tell you, you know, the two month mark I had this happen and you know, I've had it for two years and it's been perfect. I don't know that, can't comment on it. If you can, let everybody know your thoughts. What you would do to improve it if you've not had any issues and you feel it's blown out of proportion. Uh, similarly on the bi cuts, let me know your thoughts. Once again, can't stress enough, if you want to see that screwdriver stand painted, let me know. And I guess that would be a good way to end the video. Kosher's doing work. I've got some work to do too in terms of getting more videos cranked out. So this is what we brought in today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll get a better thumbnail. Again, let me know your thoughts and everything. Sorry for the, the interruptions. Kind of kills the flow. <laughs> so, it is what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will catch you back here for more action from the shop.